Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're checking out the historic Pauper event, which means we have to bring a deck only using commons from all of MTG Arena's history. And Persistent Petitioners is banned, so you can cheese people out with the Petitioners. And the deck I've been having a lot of success with is the Hexproof deck. You might remember this from a previous uh, Pauper event about a year ago. But uh, we've got a few updates here. We used to play four colors, so we could play some Flying Enchantments in blue but now we've got Angelic Gift instead, so we can reduce the colors to just three. So the idea of the deck is pretty simple. Get a Jungleborn Pioneer or a Jade Guardian in play as soon as possible. Both of these creatures come with a Hexproof creature attached. In the case of the Pioneer, a 1-1 Merfolk token. In the case of a Jade Guardian, we get a 4-mana 2-2, and we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target Merfolk we control. And then once we've got our Hexproof creature, we can start loading them up with Auras, and we've got a bunch of different auras here. We've got Angelic Gift to give flying and draw card. We've got Dub to give plus two, plus two and first strike. We also have Squire's Devotion and Mark of the Vampire, both to give lifelink, since that's often a very important keyword to give to our large hexproof creature so we can outrace opposing aggro decks. A couple Oaken Forms just to make our creature bigger. And then Candlelight Vigil can also give Vigilance as well as making our creature bigger, which also helps us in those racing situations as we can still block with our giant hexproof creature. And then rounding out the deck, we've got Lanner Elves to speed things up, maybe help us cast a turn 2 Pioneer or turn 3 Jade Guardian. And we also have a bit of more mana fixing in the form of Urban Utopia, which also replaces itself. And we've got a couple pacifisms against the more aggressive decks. Having some early interaction can be important. But uh, other cards we can consider, the Wood Shaper at 4 mana, that can help us find creatures or enchantments could be good. But uh, usually not necessary, since you can't really keep a hand without a Hexproof creature. So that's also where the London Mulligan comes in handy. Just want to keep mulliganing until you have Pioneer or a Jade Guardian in your opening hand. You can potentially still win on a Mulligan to 3 if you just find your Hexproof creature, draw some lands, draw some enchantments. So it is a deck that uh, is definitely capable of going pretty low, but uh, the London Mulligan just helps us have that Hexproof creature in our opening hand more consistently. So since uh, our last Popper Hexproof video, the deck got even better thanks to that new Mulligan rule. And then looking at the mana base, can also potentially be changed up a little bit. We've got Evolving Wilds, which can fetch up one Swamp, two Plains or nine Basic Forests. Plenty of untapped green sources to play the Elves early and make sure we can play Pioneer and Guardian as soon as possible. Couple tap lands that gain life as well, Scarred Barons and a Blossoming Sands. So pretty straightforward deck, pretty fun to play. So if you're looking to farm the event, this is uh, highly recommended. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and yeah, this seems capable enough. We've got our Hexproof creature, some enchantments, the elves to make sure we can cast our pioneer in a timely fashion. So let's lead with the sands, keep all those basic lands in the deck so we can draw them. Very miscreant, so some sort of flyers deck. Just gonna fetch Swamp right away, I think. Could also make an argument for fetching planes, I suppose, in case we wanna play two wide enchantments in the same turn. And I don't have the mark in hand yet. But I can fetch uh, planes now. Alright, so we've got our good starts. And enchantments in hand, so. I guess now we're just looking for lifelink enchantments, so we don't lose the race, and there we go. Speak of the devil. So what do we want to do first? Oaken form the 1-1, one -one. and then next turn give it lifelink, seems fine. I'm okay trading off Lanner Elves for the Cloudkin Seer, if that's what they want. Got to watch out for potentially something like uh, Blink of an Eye bouncing one of my enchantments. So we'll have to keep that in mind, but no blue mana for my opponents. Pacifism, my Pioneer, that's fine. And this should be pretty much game over.
Especially once we put the Angelic Gift on it. And my opponent explodes, alright, so pretty swift victory here. Alright, so on the play, no Hexproof creature, so we'll Mulligan. Go to 5. Alright, that's a keep. And then probably bottom the Pacifism. And it might be the Vigil, sadly, as much as I want to keep it. The lifelink might be more important, although I guess we're only going to have a 1-1, one -one, so making a 1-1 one -one into a 2-2 two -two lifelink is not all that uh, amazing. And we do have more lifelink enchantments than vigilance enchantments, so maybe this is better. And keep all the lands so we can make sure we can uh, get to our pioneer in time. Turn one swamp. Alright. The elves a little bit late to the party, but that's okay. So maybe one turn window for Mephitic Vapors to kill my Hexproof creature. It's gonna be Burglar Rats. Goodbye, Lunar Elves. First strike means we don't need to worry about potential death touch from my opponents, which is one way to potentially stop a giant hexproof creature. Blade juggler, sure. Can't play the vigil, so we'll go with the Oaken form. Probably gonna see a trade for Juggler and Pioneer. Nope, opponent takes it. Reaper makes me discard my last two cards, sadly. Put my opponent in chum block mode here. Do we play around the weird edict effects? I don't think we do. Send both. Dusk Legion Zealots can uh, chum block here and buy some time. Put them down to three though. They could have the tendrils to gain a ton of life, so that's probably something that they're playing. As one of the commons from the Anthology expansion. Vigilance is a nice bonus. So lifelink and flying are the last two keywords that we would like. Fungal Infection, their own Zealots. Sure, we didn't have lifelink, so that didn't accomplish all that much. Once we do have lifelink, killing your own creature in response is a nice way to prevent uh, gaining a life, as we see Inheritance as one of the points win conditions. That's fine. Utopia means we can uh, potentially cast our Mark of the Vampire if we draw it. And if at any point we find our flying enchantment, we also win the game. Apicure of Blood is a good one, good synergy with the inheritance. But there's Angelic Gift, so that should be game over. Alright, sweet. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a very keepable hand. All three of our colors, a Hexroof creature, just needing our fourth land here. And we're just gonna fetch a swamp right away. A 
up against turn 2 sword form hybrids, and there's our lands. Always have the option of casting Devotion on the opponent's creature too, if we're in, in desperate need of a 1-1 lifelinking token. But that's usually a last resort. So if my opponent's just kind of a green creature deck, I like our chances. Potentially we'll need First Strike or Flying if there's a ground stall, in case they can trade off for my Jade Guardian. But we've got a lot of ways to make our Jade Guardian bigger. Counter on the hybrid means they can no longer use the adapt ability. Also got to keep potential instant speed pump spells in mind, so got to be careful there. Bloom Hulk, pretty good here. Hits me for 4, so if they do have a 1 mana pump spell, they could potentially trade off after I put Mark of the Vampire on my Guardian. So it might be worth waiting. Opponent passes. So that's a little bit suspicious. What could my opponent have? Like a Stony Strength comes to mind. Giant Growth also has to be legal. So those are two potential cards they could have. But playing around Giant Growth for the rest of the game is going to be very difficult. I mean, maybe I do just mark and then see if they even attack to begin with. If they don't attack, then we know they don't have the pump spell. And if they do, we'll have to take uh, other steps, potentially. Of course, they could bluff having a pump spell. Just a Wayfinder finding Dreadmaw, which they keep on top, that's fine. So I'm not going to be able to attack my opponent anytime soon, but they're also not going to be able to attack me, as I'm going to have a giant lifelinking blocker. So then we just need to find our flying or first strike enchantments to break the board stall. And there's first strike. So should be good to go here. Seven, eight, yep. They shouldn't have enough power and toughness to kill Guardian through first strike damage. So they take ten to the face. And we'll play Pioneer. Titanic Brawl is what they were holding in hand this entire time. Makes sense. But how do they beat a 10 power Vigilant lifelinking first ranking Jade Guardian? Alright, looks like my opponent may be disconnected. Send in the Guardian. And uh, I guess wait for my opponent to time out. Hexproof, definitely not the most fun mechanic to play against. But uh, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see fewer Hexproof creatures in the future. Throne of Aldrain, for example, didn't have any of them. So that's uh, promising for the future. Alright, and uh, 12 to the face for the win. So far, so good. We didn't face any of the bad matchups for the deck. Of course, sometimes the deck loses to itself if it doesn't draw the Hexproof creature in time, and we have to mulligan into Oblivion. But for the most part, the bad matchups are counterspell-heavy decks that can just counter the few Hexproof creatures you have. And then uh, sometimes aggressive decks, or red aggressive decks mainly, can go underneath you, maybe kill you if they're on the play, and you don't get your Hexproof creature and lifelink enchantment online soon enough. So those are kind of the common matchups that you tend to lose against. And then the mirror match is kind of a coin toss. So for the most part, the deck has a lot of good matchups and uh, sometimes just loses to itself. But I uh, have been pretty impressed by the performance so far. So let's keep it up. All right, we're on the draw. And yeah, this hand seems keepable enough. I've got our hexproof creatures. I've got our Lander Elves to speed things up and one enchantment. Hopefully we can draw more. So this is the type of hand that's decent against uh, counterspell-heavy decks, as we've got multiple Hexproof creatures. 
And of course the Pioneer is still a reasonable three drop by itself. And looks like we're up against a red aggressive deck, right? So another one of those matchups that we can definitely lose, but we do have the Mark of the Vampire, which is pretty key. I've seen some of these red aggressive decks also pick up uh, Kiln Fiend as one of the anthology cards. And there it is. Alright, sadly no untap lands, so I guess we'll just play this for now. Still would prefer to play the Jade Guardian first and enchant that instead of playing my enchantments on my 1-1 Hexproof token, so drawing an untap land here would still be decent. That is assuming the Lunar Elves survives, which it doesn't. Alright, that's a bummer. So might need two more turns to set up here. Which is definitely not what we want. Alright, that's too bad. But uh, hopefully next turn I can play Guardian then. So let's Utopia. Kiln Fiend is a very scary card, so there's a chance we die, but uh, we'll see. I might have to play Pioneer before playing Guardian just to try and manage the Kiln Fiend, since of course I can't really afford to block Kiln Fiend with my Jade Guardian. Spellgorge are weird, opponent's gonna set up for a turn before they unload all their instants and sorceries, and still no fourth lands that comes into play untapped, so... We had a bit of a clunky draw, and we're up against a red aggressive deck, which is not a good combination. Shock kills Pioneer. I might have to chum block Kiln Fiend, I was about to say, but now it tramples, so... Blocking doesn't accomplish much, and we could just be dead here. 6, uh, 13. Yeah, this is not gonna go well for me. And secure the critics for lethal. Alright, well, we just explained how this can be a bad matchup, and we saw it in action here. Kiln Fiend definitely makes that matchup a lot scarier than it used to be, as I can give it a uh, trample first strike with all those rat cantrips. But of course, on the flip side, the Kiln Fiend deck is going to be weaker against removal-heavy decks, whereas, uh, of course, we don't care about spot removal. Alright, on the play, no Hexproof, so we'll mulligan. This is better. I wish I could keep everything. I could just bottom the Lanner Elves and then be happy with the turn 3 Pioneer. That doesn't rely on the Elf surviving. Maybe... Although these are both lifelink enchantments, which is a bit redundant, but they do also increase power and toughness. Yeah, this is probably fine still. If we had another untapped plan, I could have potentially played Pioneer turn 2, which could have been worth it, but... Just gonna fetch a swamp here. And turn one mountain for my opponents. They seem to have a shock in hand. A red green and a seven dwarfs, alright. Well, that's a, a nice one. Fair enough. So we've got our lifelink. I guess we want to find uh, first strike, flying vigilance now. There's a shock that we kind of expected. Take two. And the Rimrock Knight, but it can block. So I think we're fine just going for Mark of the Vampire. Could also go for Squire's Devotion, actually, since the 1-1 one -one token threatens to block the Rimrock Knight. Yeah, that could actually be better here.
and make him deal with the token first. Nice, cure the critics, that's acceptable. Well, opponent's trying to raise a lifelinking creature, that's not gonna end well for them. And there's Vigilance. So now just looking for first strike and maybe flying. Erynx as a 4-4 on defense. Opponent stays back with everyone. So I'm not gonna be able to attack this turn as they can double block. But uh, maybe next turn we can attack. Another seven dwarves. But then again, my opponent also doesn't really get to attack me unless they have a pump spell at the ready. Pacifism is interesting. Uh, doesn't quite let me attack as I can't play it and mark in the same turn. So let's just uh, Utopia first and see what we get. Pioneer, I could play. Or I could pacify the Erynx and then set up for Mark next turn. Although we do have to be mindful of another Rimrock Knight on one of their blockers too. So I might wait for the Flying or First Strike anyway. In which case I'm playing Pioneer. So it's just a matter of time before we get to attack with our giant creature. And there's not a ton my opponent can do in the meantime. Out muscle the pioneer, sure. Elf. So let's play Elf and then could pacify right now. I think I'm gonna hold it just in case I do play something uh, out of the ordinary and I can still potentially mark plus pacify next turn and attack. Alright, so. If I were to pacify the Erynx and then mark the Merfolk, it would have 8 toughness. So double block and a Rimrock Knight is still enough to trade off. So I think I want to avoid that situation. So I'm just going to play the mark and pass. So now they can also activate the uh, Frenzied Erring, go up to 7 power. But there we go. That should seal the deal. Angelic Gifts. And my opponent explodes. So yeah, that's been my experience for the most part. As I've said, we can lose to Counterspell decks, we can lose to Red Aggressive decks. Sometimes you lose to yourself if you don't draw the right cards. But uh, overall, the deck has a lot of good matchups. So definitely recommend it if you're trying to win this event a bunch. And uh, yeah, maybe be mindful of uh, Edict effects under Cities Embrace. Could potentially pick up um, in popularity if uh, lots of people end up playing the Hexproof strategy. But uh, for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.